Hello everyone, I think I'm live. Uh, this is gonna be my first time doing this, so I think in the age of COVID and teleconferences and Zoom, uh, we are actually getting used to talking to screens. So uh, I'll probably keep it short for this first time, but uh, I wanted to give you guys some updates. I know some of you have uh, followed topics in radiography for uh, several years. Uh, some of you are new. I know there's a, a flurry of new students kind of coming to the page now, uh, especially since I found a few uh, interesting Facebook groups that I've recently started contributing to. But uh, welcome. Thank you for showing up. Uh, today, I just wanted to give a few updates. Uh, the very first one is involving the weekly challenge that I posted. If you go to my website at jeremyenfinger.com, that's J-E-R-E-M-Y-E-N finger. That's probably the easiest way I can spell it. Uh, jeremyandfinger.com. One of the blog posts there is a weekly challenge, and this is the first of many. Okay, so uh, I am a firm believer that, you know, radiography school is supposed to give you the basics. That doesn't mean that by the end of your two years in radiography school, you're going to have mastered everything. Um, it's going to give you the basics to pass the registry exam, to get a kind of foundation in your field, and you're expected to grow from there. And what I so often see is, you know, techs get out there, they get credentialed, they start working, they might even be overseeing students, and they get lazy. It's almost like they just stop caring. And that's unfortunate because I think in order to grow in professionalism in our field, we need to be actively and constantly promoting it. So that's kind of the, the reason why I was getting behind this challenge, but I wanted to make sure that these weekly challenges are going to be doable for anyone who is a radiologic technologist, regardless of the amount of experience you have. So for example, our first one, this is the first weekly weekly challenge. It's going to go next week starting uh, Sunday. I kind of made it Sunday to Saturday because I know you guys are working the weekends. If you work for a hospital, it's 24-7. You might work anytime. Um, you also might be a casual employee only, only working one or two days a week, or you might be out of work right now a little bit because of this COVID-19 craziness. Um, I really hope you guys are, you know, hanging in there with that, but uh, let me know, shoot me a message or, or let me know in the comments if you're struggling with that. I know some of my own staff have uh, been out of work, you know, a little while now, but I think things are gonna start picking up here within the next week or so. Um, so this first challenge, I, I, if you don't know me, I tend to go off on tangents. Um, <laughs> I try not to do that as much as possible here. Uh, but I do want this to kind of have a casual feel compared to like a, a lecture that I'm doing in school or one of my YouTube videos that has to be so, you know, specific content, just bullet points. Um, week one challenge starting next week. Very simple. Just increase your collimation. Bring your field of view in by a half inch on PA and AP chest x-rays. Not too bad. I think everybody can do this. Um, usually the x-ray tube defaults to the image receptor size to minimize exposure to the patient. I think this is just something that can constantly be practiced on every exam, but I wanted to give specific goals, uh, measurable and achievable goals uh, for chest x-rays this time around. So that's the first one. I, I really want people to get involved in this. I've had several good uh, comments, feedback on uh, Facebook and Instagram so far uh, as far as people wanting to jump in. I think that's great. Um, as I say in the blog post, I think there is greater accountability in groups. So tell your peers about this. You know, they don't have to come to the website. They don't have to interact with me. But if you can get a small group of people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis, all working towards the same goal. I mean, think of the impact you can have for patient care in your whole department. Um, so that's my goal. Uh, you can customize this however you want. Uh, I'm not going to have a challenge every week. I'll probably put one out a month and it's going to last for a week duration. So 
you might be seeing this, you know, years from now, who knows? Um, probably post this to Facebook if I can figure out how. I'm still uh, learning the whole social media Instagram thing. Uh, old dogs can learn new tricks, but I think you can work on something every week, personally. Use this one as a starting point. Next week, pick your own. Uh, you can just do this one day a week. You can do it uh, however often you want. So that's the goal, just keeping people focused on constant improvement. They call it CQI. I know some of those people uh, in 2011, um, the ART said, we're gonna have this uh, renewal every 10 years. So if you've been registered uh, starting 2011 and after, every 10 years you're gonna have to do some kind of exam uh, or competency assessment to renew your license. I mean, thankfully I'm grandfathered in, but a lot has changed in 10 years. So um, I think just staying current on the uh, latest and greatest technology, uh, evidence-based practices, and all those things, um, again, just constant attention toward improvement in these things is going to make that so much easier. But it has to be actively participated in. Uh, I also wanted to kind of fill you guys in on some of my YouTube plans. I am really going to be trying to ramp up that YouTube channel. I already have probably seven or eight videos in the queue to post. They're, they're going to be at least once a week. I'm shooting for Tuesdays. So if you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel every Tuesday, early morning, I think I put it at like 4 a.m. Uh, every Tuesday, I'll have a new one out. So uh, subscribe there. I've got things like more image critique videos coming. I, I just did one on a, on a Q&A session where somebody had uh, asked me what happens when the x-ray button is pushed. So that's one. I, I love Q&A. If you guys want to send me questions, I'll try to do a detailed explanation on YouTube about it. I think more people need to be doing this as the technology gets easier to use. There, there's no reason not to share this information. Um, I was also planning, and I have a few people in mind for this, but doing some uh, post-primary certification, uh, I guess, career exploration videos into other modalities like ultrasound, uh, nuke med, MRI, CT, MAMO. Um, I'm not intentionally leaving anything out, but I also have uh, other people in my contacts who went into either radiology sales or applications um, there's someone I know who's actively doing forensic radiography and uh, she's a wealth of knowledge. I did a forensic uh, online forensics class and we did a little trip to uh, the San Diego County Medical Examiner for uh, our particular class. But um, these are all different career uh, directions you can go in, uh, education and leadership or other ones. So I'm going to be picking people's brains. I may do an announcement before I actually get those uh, interviews going, taking questions from you guys uh, to ask the people I'm interviewing. You know, I've, I've done CT, I've done IR, cath lab, but that stuff was so long ago, I'm sure things have changed and I want to get you guys more current info uh, than what's up in this cobweb filled brain of mine. Um, and then. Last but not least, I think just letting you guys know about my website, uh, jeremyandfinger.com. Again, I just kind of put the bare bones out there. I have a lot of resources and um, other things that I'm going to be adding to it over the next several months. Uh, one of the things somebody asked me to do, and this is one of my students uh, who's going to be graduating here in a few weeks, was to create a formula guide. Um, some kind of a just list of all of the formulas, the math formulas used in radiography programs. So I'm going to try to do that and make it look really nice. I'll probably have it in like a downloadable PDF form. Um, depending on the interest in that and how that goes, I may go a step further and create kind of a workbook. Um, I know as an instructor, one of the things that I think most textbooks and, and uh, resources we have as teachers is lacking is practice problems. You know, you, you learn a concept, you learn a formula, and there might be three in the book if, if you're lucky, or maybe the book has a workbook that accompanies it that has maybe 10 of them. I think we need more of that practice. At least I did when I was in school. I know it's a current issue for my 
my students. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to keep it nice and short today. Um, but let me know. I don't know if you guys can comment here. I'm seeing a couple waves. Uh, who is this? Missy and Leo. Thank you for joining. I've only got two joiners here, but hopefully as I keep doing these every Saturday, we'll get more people involved. Uh, more importantly, I can I can put these on YouTube and people can watch them later. But um, I hope you guys take my uh, weekly challenge, the collimation, at least a, uh, an additional half inch on your chest x-rays next week. So start Sunday or Monday or whenever your first shift is next week and um, follow up. Let me know how it goes. If you have any questions you'd like me to cover either here or on my YouTube channel, feel free to reach out. You can always email me, topicsinradiography at gmail.com, or just DM me here. Anywhere you want to uh, ask me is fine. I'm checking everything regularly. Uh, so thank you again for joining me. Again, I'm keeping it short. Till I get a little more to talk about uh, as things progress with the website, I'll probably just keep these Saturday sessions a little casual but um, hoping it can turn into something a little more. So I hope you guys have a good day. Stay safe out there, no COVID for anybody, and um, let me know if I can do anything for you. Talk to you later.